Hello there, Boss 1617 EVS. We've been through so much together. You've helped me through so many projects. I love you, Bosch. I love you. No, no, I hate you. You've screwed up more projects of mine than I care to talk about. So we need to let these people know what my real thoughts are. Let's talk about it. Okay, so here's the Bosch 1617 EVS. I've had this router for probably a year and a half, maybe two years at this point. Uh, and it has served me incredibly well. Uh, as far as the router itself is concerned, it does a fantastic job. I think I mentioned in the sponsor part of the video that uh, we do a lot of river tables here. And so I have a woodpecker slab mill that I've always historically used this in. And if you've done anything with resin before, you know uh, surfacing resin is not easy. It's super hard. It takes a lot of power out of a router, uh, as well as capable of doing the speed, which most can. Um, but this has always served me like a champ, and I've never, ever, ever had a problem with this router. And so let's talk about, so if you're talking about just the router, right, uh, then it works fantastically, and I strongly recommend this router. Uh, it is a powerhouse of a router for the price. There are more powerful routers, but you're going to spend a lot more. Now, I've got quite a few um, large routers here in, in, in the shop. I've got a Craftsman, a very old Craftsman, probably 20 years old. Uh, I have a Porter Cable, again, probably 15, 20 years old. I also have a Makita, and I probably got five or six Palm routers. Now, where I started to run into problems with using the 1617 EVS was in my old Bosch uh, router table. Recently, and that's what motivated me to switch and add my own custom router table to the end of my Harvey table saw here, which I have a video that I recently put out on that. So if you want to see kind of how all that unfolded and what I have to say about that, go check out that video. So to do that in the Bosch router table, you have to buy, um, you know, just the regular base for it. Have to, an extra base, basically. We don't have to, but if you want to use the base and take it in and out, you need an extra base. And, and so what you could do with that was the ability to be able to put a an Allen wrench, a long Allen wrench, and you could raise the router up and down within the base, right? Okay, so this just mounted to the bottom of the router table. What would happen is, is there's usually typically, I don't know if you can see that right there, but in, let me try and get that over there. Yeah, so right here, okay, this threaded rod here is what raises it up and down. And in that threaded rod right there, there should be a little stop ring. And that little stop ring is what stops it from going too far. If that stop ring comes off, you're dead in the water. This thing doesn't work. It'll slip and slide on you in the middle, middle of routing, which this thing has caused and screwed up more than a handful of projects on that Bosch router table. So that's what motivated me to buy the Jessam router lift. I think everybody knows the reputation of Jessam. If you don't, you should go out there and check out this video as well as other videos on the Jessam router lift. It's pretty much known as the best you can buy out there. Um, there's lots of great ones out there too, okay? Ultimately, um, I had to go that route. And so this part is what drives me nuts. So Bosch, you gotta freaking fix this. Do you know how many, you know what number this is on in that year and a half? This is the sixth one I've bought. At 40 bucks a piece, six. Six times four is $240. Could have bought the whole new router with the blade, with the plunge on it for $240. And so ultimately, I don't have, you know, I'm missing one of the bases to the Craftsman, uh, which is why it's now in here, because it's a more powerful router and does a great job. And I use the, I now use the Porter Cable for all my slab mill work, because it's more powerful too. So I kind of like to leave dedicated routers for things. But this is certainly a well all around router for sure. Now, if you're using this from a tabletop surface routing, and you're raising this and lowering this, you can kind of see what's going on there because this is not underneath the table hidden where you can't see it. And you could probably see that problem coming. So if you're not using this this particular base in a router lift, uh, and really the only place you would do that is with the Bosch router table, um, then this works perfectly fine. The plunge is, is, does exactly what you expect out of a plunge. Um, I can't really say it's great. I can't say it's bad. It does exactly what you expect, as does the router. Very, very, very powerful router. I've done, like I said, I've done a lot of slab work with it. So if you're considering buying the Boss 1617 EVS, I will tell you that it is a fantastic router and you're gonna be very hard 
press to find a router that uh, that is this quality at this price. Again, there are better routers out there for sure, but you're going to spend a lot more. And typically, you're getting into the three horsepower router when you do that, which is really quite more recommended on a slab mill. To be honest with you, uh, you can run you can uh, run a larger surfacing bit with it. But uh, regardless, I don't have a three horsepower here. All mine are two horsepower. So so anyway, uh, check out this router if you want that. But be warned, be warned that if you use this in a router lift and you depend heavily on this thing keeping that exactly where it's supposed to be, even though it's locked in, even though it, that's what's surprising about this, even though it's locked in, it would slip on me in the middle of uh, routing, especially doing uh, large flush trim work where I'm doing pattern work around a quarter, uh, a quarter lumber. Uh, we make some guitar shaped cutting boards here and I have to be able to go around that. And so that takes a lot. So anyway, the, the whole router, the, 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 the bit would go up and down on me. Uh, and it drove me nuts, and it would cause the whole thing to get messed up, and I'd end up having to scrap the whole thing. Take my lessons learned. Uh, this is not, I'm not paid by Bosch. Bosch has no idea I'm making this, uh, but I thought I'd share with you some things that I've learned, some successes and some failures along the way. So do me a favor, leave me some comments down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your experience has been. Maybe you've had nothing but great experiences with it, and for the most part, I have. But maybe you've had some similar issues and you want to vent about that? Well, get on there and vent. It's perfectly fine. Or get on there and celebrate. It's perfectly fine, too. Just leave me some comments. But until next time, hope all of you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's helping me grow. I have another YouTube channel out there uh, that's it's quite successful that it's been out for a couple of years. And if you happen to be a musician or into recording studio things, uh, I am into that as well. And I have a YouTube channel called Studio Talk out there on YouTube. Go check it out if you're interested in that, okay? Uh, but I'm trying to get this one off the ground, so help me do that. Let's go. All right. Bye-bye. See you later.